Alrighty, guys, gals, non-binary pals, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate it very much. As you can see, all of these lovely people here, they are here live while I'm recording this. I stream every single day, every single weekday on Twitch at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you want to join us, please do. It is completely free. It doesn't cost you any money, and you can be here while... I am live, and we have a, fun, a ton of fun talking about a ton of different things. Before we get too much into the video, I do want to say this video is sponsored by me. <laughs> uh, so I just recently released two new shirts as well as a hat that I'm wearing right here um, from my collection called the Be Kind Collection. Uh, we have sizes all the way up to a 5XL and worldwide shipping. I want to make sure as many people can get the stuff as possible uh, so be kind it kind of means basically no matter how much you've gone through no matter you know how hard life has been you can always be kind to others but more importantly kind of like be kind to yourself uh, so hopefully it spreads a positive message to those out there but yeah so the stuff is available 5xl um, all the way down to smalls and uh, we have the hat as well but if you want to check it out I would really appreciate it but let's get back into the video today we are going to be talking about something, I've talked about this before in videos, and I mentioned it in a very recent video, I kind of glossed over it, and I had a few people that were kind of curious, and so I felt like today would be a good day to kind of take a step back, talk about something that I've talked about in the past, but also share some of the knowledge that I feel like I have uh, accrued over the years, and share how I feel now. What are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about uh, an ED known as binge eating disorder. And so let's switch cameras because we have two cameras. And uh, I'm going to look at you guys straight in the eye with this one right here. Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> That's crazy. It's like a new person. All right. So <laughs> stupid. I want to talk about binge eating. And what I want to talk about is my experience with it because I feel that my experience, and I think that this is kind of how binging eating is for everybody. I feel like there's a lot of people that can relate to my story, but at the same time, my story is my story, right? And there is no one that has my exact story, and that kind of goes into a lot of what I want to talk about. So for those of you guys that might not know what binge eating is, basically, it kind of manifests a little bit different for everybody, but what it was for me was I would over-restrict during the week or during a few days and then I would go on these really crazy binge sessions where I would eat thousands and thousands of calories to a point where I felt like I couldn't control myself like I really felt like I was out of control and that was the scariest part because I'd wake up the next day and then I would have a lot of shame a lot of guilt and then the cycle would continue because then I would over restrict but before we get into that let's take a step back and I want to talk about how I got into this position so as I said in that uh, previous video I have ADD, ADHD, whatever you want to call it, and this has manifested in a lot of ways for me, and one of those things where I became very hyper-focused on losing weight, and now this was, honestly, was a good thing, and I think, all in all, um, losing weight and becoming hyper-focused on weight loss did me a lot of good, right? It, it literally did save my life, but with my life being saved, n nothing is gumdrops and rainbows, right? There's going to be negatives. And one of the negatives for me was I became addicted to losing weight to where it wasn't healthy anymore. And so the way that I can explain it was I started cutting my calories and I started seeing results. And for me, this was a big deal because I was 20 years old. And at this time in my life, I had tried to lose weight many, 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 many times, right? Like weight loss was something I did all like basically my whole life because I was overweight my entire life and I tried to lose weight so many times and I was never successful, right? There are tons of people that they were successful. They've been, they've, you know, they've lost weight and they were able to lose 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, and then they gained some of it back, right? I was never that person. I literally was so bad at losing weight. I never saw any results and I tried since I was a kid right there was one time I've talked about this before it's kind of funny but it's also kind of sad I was really really young under probably under 10 years old around that age and my mom was trying to get me to lose weight bless her heart she was doing it because she cared about me this is right when right around when my weight was becoming more more than just oh he's just chunky or he's just husky right it was like um 
it's becoming a problem, right? Like, I don't understand why my son is gaining so much weight. So my mom, again, we were very poor, and somehow she got a hold of SlimFast. I don't know. I know she didn't buy it, but I think someone at her job was trying it, and they ended up not, and so they gave her a bunch. And so for me, being a kid, I saw SlimFast, SlimFast. All right, so I drink these things, and I lose weight. It doesn't work like that because I would drink them but then still eat normal. <laughs> So, you know, like I tell that story just to show you, like I had tried to lose weight my whole life. I genuinely believed, okay, I genuinely believed that I could not lose weight because of how many times I had tried and how many times I completely failed before even losing 10 pounds. I felt like there was something wrong with me. I felt like it was impossible for me, right? And so by the time that I was 20 years old, I genuinely felt like I was a lost cause. I felt like there was no way that I could lose weight. The sad thing was, is I fell into the trap that most people fall into is I tried so many things that were unnecessary and way too hard, way too intense. I couldn't stick to it. One, I was a kid, right? So I just, I just didn't stick to it. But two, it was too intense. And so I would try all of these really, really hard things and fail. And so I felt like there was something wrong with me. And so when I actually started to lose weight, it was just through counting my calories. And I wasn't even going to the gym before I would try and like go do some super hard workout routine that wasn't necessary. And again, I would burn myself out. I would feel like, oh, I earned XYZ food. And we all know that doesn't work, right? And so when I started losing weight, I was like, okay, I'm just going to start, uh, you know, cutting my calories. Again, I didn't even know what that really meant. But basically what I did, which I've talked about before, was the common sense diet. So it cut out soda, junk food, and fast food, right? So that's how I started. And what that meant was I started cutting calories, right, without really even knowing what they were. But obviously if you are cutting those things out of your diet, you're probably going to cut calories. And that's what happened for me, right? But then I started to learn more and more. And eventually – I started to see, and this is a big problem that I feel like a lot of people have, is I started to see calories as evil. Calories are the enemy. Calories need to be avoided at all cost because it's calories' fault that I am in this position, right? And that became very dangerous. Because I started to think the more calories I cut out of my diet, the better I'll do. And that wasn't even necessarily false. But the thing is, losing weight at a quick pace is not the end-all be-all of health. It really, really isn't. And this is how I kind of went into that dark path. Because for a while... You know, I was so large. I was basically 400 pounds. I could, I could cut, you know, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 calories out of my diet, and I still had ample amount of calories to work with, right? Didn't really matter. But then once I started, this didn't really happen until I had lost a good amount of my weight because at this point now, the smaller you are, the less calories you need to sustain your body, right? So that meant if I wanted to continue losing weight, I had to cut calories more and more and more. Now, where this became a really big problem was I was working two jobs. I was working at, <laughs> it's kind of funny, I was working at this place called Vons, which is a grocery store, and I was also working at this place called Vans, which is a shoe store. Van Shoes, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it. So I was working these two jobs, and the job that I had at Vons was very labor-intensive. It was a, I worked in the uh, meat department, so you picked up really heavy boxes and moved them around. You were in the freezer a lot. Uh, it was rough. It was rough when you're eating barely anything, and you're already always cold because you're losing a lot of weight. You're not eating enough calories to sustain yourself, and now you're trying to lift 50, 100-pound you know, containers of frozen ribs in the freezer, right? It was rough. But, you know, it is what it is. It, was, it, was, it wasn't a bad job. So when this all came to a head was when I was working at Vaughn's, I was genuinely eating maybe 700 to maybe 1,200 calories a day. And what that looked like for me was I would eat maybe one packet of oatmeal, one packet of plain oatmeal, plain that's like 100 calories. That would be my breakfast, right? 
And then a lot of times I would work at Vaughn's earlier in the day and then I would work at Vans later in the day or sometimes it would switch, right? But I worked at Vaughn's a lot more. There wasn't that many hours at Vans. So then I would go to Vaughn's and I would work. And then for lunch, I would have at, at Vaughn's, I'm sure this is similar to a lot of grocery stores around you, they would have these prepackaged salads, right? That would have, it was like in a bowl, plastic bowl, and they would have everything you need. You just needed to put it together and shake it up. There you go, right? So I would have that for lunch with maybe an apple. I would maybe have another apple for a snack. And then for dinner, a lot of times I would have like a chicken salad or if my, this is when I was living with my mom still, if she made something, I would have a small portion of that spaghetti or whatever it was, right? And so I, that's the amount of calories that I was eating. And I was getting to a point where a lot of time it became normal it became normal for me. If I ever stood up quick, I would see black and I would be, I felt like I was going to pass out. That became very normal. And the thing is, I don't know how I knew this at the time, but my best friend, we would have conversations because he was so proud of me for losing the weight, right? He was super stoked. But he, he knew I wasn't eating enough, and I would, st I would tell him, yeah, I think what I'm doing isn't the healthiest, but I'll figure it out once I lose all the weight. Now, that is a, a terrible, terrible way to go about it. I am very, 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 very lucky that I was able to figure stuff out. But if someone, if I was working with someone and they said that that's what they were doing, I would be like, you need to chill, bro, because that is not a good way to go about it. Okay, so binge eating hasn't happened yet though, right? So what ended up happening was I started doing this. This was this is what I did. This is what I did consistently, right? But then I started binging. I didn't know what that was. And this is when I actually started lifting as well. And I was like even being even more, you know, active and stuff like that. So but I started I started binging. At the time, I thought that I was just not being dedicated enough. So what it would look like was for me, and again, it's important. We're going to go into more of this later in the video. But just because this is what I did, I'm not saying that this is what you should do. And no one's story is the same. It's just not how it works, in my opinion. But so what it would look like for me was I would restrict, restrict, restrict for three, maybe four days. And then on the fourth, fifth day, I would binge. And what that looked like for me was almost always at night, almost always, and it was when everyone was asleep because there obviously I had this sense of guilt and, you know, my whole family was so proud of me. They didn't really, I didn't want them to see me eating these foods because I felt like, you know, they'll judge me and stuff like that, right? So it was when everyone was asleep and there'd be food in the kitchen and your boy would just go crazy, right? And it didn't matter what it was. It could be healthy food. It could be unhealthy food. I would just go hard. One of the worst times I remember eating, I don't even, it was like a ton of cereal. But then, this was after, I had already eaten a lot. But then I went to the, I went into my kitchen and we had straight up just like normal checks. all right? It's not, not sweet cereal, very plain checks. I grabbed the box. And now this is when I had known about macros. And so I didn't eat it with any milk. Because I was like, there's fat and stuff. I don't want to have that. I just need, I would, I remember telling myself, oh, it's a refeed. So I'm just eating a lot of carbs. Y'all, I ate the whole box dry by itself. I didn't even enjoy it. Like it literally was starting to hurt my mouth. Okay. And it was, it wasn't even fun, but I couldn't stop myself. Right. Right. And still at this time, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't understand why I was doing this. I just felt like I was being, you know, not dedicated. I wasn't working hard enough. Because I had this thought in my head, if I can do something for a day or two, why can't I do that forever, right? And so... That kind of makes sense, right? If I can eat 1,200 calories for a day and not pass out, I just need to be hashtag dedicated to doing that forever. Surprise, it doesn't work like that. And so this was a cycle that I was on 
for quite a long time. And it took a lot to get over it. Now, the way that I got over it, and this is, again, important, I am not telling you to do what I did. I am not saying that if you have a similar story to me, this will work for you. I am not qualified to give anyone advice. This is me telling my story. I am a YouTuber. I'm not a binge eating specialist, all right? This is my story. This is not advice. I want to make that clear, all right? I'm not your therapist. I'm not going to, I can't figure it out for you. And don't think that this video is me trying to do that. Okay, I just want to put that out there. So the way that I feel things almost worked themselves out with me also kind of trying to put in the work was funny enough, I did a bodybuilding show. Now, I feel like there's too much to really get into the bodybuilding show in this video because there's already there's still a lot to talk about. So if I, there's a lot that I want to talk about with that. So I think I'm going to do that in another video. OK, uh, talk about my experience and stuff like that. But I ended up signing up for one. Right. And so what that meant was I had to prep for this show. And so what prep meant for me, I signed up for the show like a year and a half in advance. Right. And so what I did was I did a bulk and I did a cut. The only bulk and cut that I've ever done, actually. And so what the bulk meant was I was like, I allowed myself to gain weight, right? And I made a whole video on my channel talking about how, oh, I'm going to uh, gain weight, everyone. I'm just letting you know, so don't freak out, right? And so I allowed myself to eat more, and that actually did help quite a bit. I understand that not everyone wants to go down that path, but that's, that, that in and of itself really helped me out a lot. It really, really did. Allowing myself to eat a little bit more and, and just being able to tell myself, you are going to gain weight. You're going to gain weight, but you're doing it because you're trying to put on muscle and you're going to compete in the show, right? Now, the issue came from the next part because when you bulk, what's next? You have to cut, right? And so I ended up cutting for the show. And the, what I did, what that means is basically just lose weight. It's just a bodybuilding term for losing weight. And so I had to lose weight for the show. And uh, I think at the top of my bulk, I was like 210. And when I competed, I was 180. So it was like 30 pounds of, of weight that I had to lose. And so I, I, went out, I went ahead and did that. And the way that I cut was like very like macros and tracked everything and all of this stuff. Now, I... I don't know how to explain this, and I wish I could give more, you know, context here, but I didn't binge the whole time that I cut for the show. Like, I, I didn't. I don't know if it was because I was so determined to step on stage and, you know, be, like, happy with the, the package that I brought on stage or whatever, but I, I didn't binge. And I would say most people, that would be very hard. But the thing is is I realized I could eat a lot more than I was when I was, you know, losing my initial weight, when I was struggling with binge eating. I don't want to use numbers, but the numbers that I was eating, I mean, I guess I've already used numbers. So the lowest that I ever got when I was competing, when I went on the cut to compete for the show was 2,100 calories. So it was like well over 1,000 calories more than I was eating before. Right now I was working out a lot more and I was doing a lot more cardio at the time too. So it was still very hard, but it was nowhere near, nowhere near the amount that I was eating before when I was struggling with binge eating. Now, when I finished the show, I was so sick of tracking macros and surprise, surprise, I have not spent a day Tracking macros since my show in 2016. I don't want to do it. Why? Because I'm lazy. I don't want to do that. It's too much work. So I told myself, we're going to do this new thing. This is 2016. This new thing that people are talking about, intuitive eating. It's very cringy now, but at the time, it was the cool thing, all right? And so I did intuitive eating after I did the show. And so I just tried to make smart decisions. And for me, that's worked really well, actually. Now, I don't 
do what I call intuitive eating more. I call it more mindful eating because I still know what I know about nutrition. I still know what I know about diet and I try to make the right decisions. Now, the way that I eat for a lot of people is really weird still. I know that. Do I have a normal relationship with food? I don't know. I really don't know. Do I feel that my relationship with food hinders me from living a normal life? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Would, if someone spent all day with me, think that uh, it was a little weird? Maybe, right? But it doesn't hinder me from living a normal life. And so my relationship with food is very simple. I eat almost the same thing pretty much every day. On the weekends, I go out and I eat. I'll get Chipotle. I'll get Panera Bread. I know some of y'all hate Panera Bread. If you hate Panera Bread, honestly, I hate you, so it's fine. Uh, I'm just kidding. But, you know, I'll go out to eat. If someone's in town and they want to go out to eat, I'm not like, oh, my God, no. I'll go out with them. If there's cake at a party, I'm going to have some of that, all of that stuff, right? So what really helped me, I believe, was allowing myself to eat a little bit more, allowing myself to gain a little bit of weight. That really, really did help me. And I don't think I, the thing is with all of this, I didn't even know what was happening while it was happening, right? It just worked out. I don't know if I'm lucky. I don't I don't have an answer. That's why I don't want to make it seem like I'm sitting here saying this is what you need to do because I didn't even know what I was doing when I was doing it. I just was like, hey, going to gain weight, going to do a show. Okay, let's start eating more. But that, that really helped me because my issue was that I was over-restricting. My body was like, dog, I'm freaking hungry. And I would just go crazy. Now, at the end of this video, I just want to say, if you are struggling with binge eating, one, everybody is different, and so your story might not sound like mine. Maybe it will, right? But I want to say that, one, there's a lot of people that struggle with this, so I don't want you to feel like there's, you know, you're weird or there's something wrong with you because that's how I felt. I really felt like there was, like, really something wrong with me. I feel like it's, it's, it's a lot more common than people realize. But the other thing that I want to say is that you can overcome it. I believe that. It can, it might be very hard. You might have to get somewhere where you're uncomfortable and you might have to gain a little bit of weight. You might have, you know, yeah, it might be difficult, but I truly believe that you can overcome it. And I know for myself, I was able to do it. And is my relationship with food perfect? I don't think so. Is it better than it's ever been? Yes. I really, really do believe that. And you know, I just wanted to share this video because I wanted to, one, kind of retell the story. But then again, you know, I have this experience that I've, you know, gained over the last basically 10 years of doing this stuff. And I just wanted to share that with y'all. So, again, if you are, you know, if you're struggling, you're not alone. And I do believe that there's a way out. I'm not saying that I have the answer. You might have to find that for yourself. You might have to talk to a professional. That might be the best decision for you. Um, but I do believe in you and I do believe that, you know, you can overcome it. Um, but yeah, that's my story. If you have anything that you want to add, of course, please leave a comment down in the comment section. If you want to join the, the streams again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also, I have a discord where if you ever need any help with weight loss, there's literally thousands of people in there that are willing to help or just talk to you. So you can join that as well. But thanks so much for watching the video and I'll see you next time. Peace.